Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I am in Scotland. We're going to be painting this cool lakescape of Venneker Lock. Um, I'm going to be sipping on some Kenmore whiskey and ginger because whiskey is the thing to drink in Scotland. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so f today for the materials, what we're gonna be using is a 16 by 20 stretched and primed canvas. You can get this at any of your craft stores or online, or you can do it yourself. And you can switch up the size, but I'm using a 16 by 20. I'm going to be using acrylic paints. The colors I'm using are titanium white, cobalt blue, Mars black, green oxide, burnt sienna, deep yellow, and a fire red. And of course you can change those colors up if you want to. Um, for brushes, I'm using a number four round brush. I'm using a one inch wide bristle. You can do a half inch. Um, I'm using a number four B pencil. So it's dark enough for you guys to see, but you can just get away with a number two pencil. Um, you'll need a paper towel for drying your brushes and you will need a cup of water for washing your brushes. And I'm also going to include a picture that you can download um, at it, in the description down below the video. So it'll be a picture of the painting as well as a picture of the original landscape. So you can print those out or use them as reference as you paint your beautiful landscape. Okay, so what I'm gonna do for my first step is an initial sketch of the landscape. Um, and because I've chosen to do a 16 by 20 canvas, proportionally, I want this to kind of fill out my um, canvas. So I'm gonna, kind of do this in a intuitive fashion um, as opposed to making it exactly the way it is out there. I still want to make it look like that, but I, I'm not going to be super concerned about having my mountains exactly where they are. But what you can do when you're going outside to do a landscape um, to figure out where you want to paint, you can use your fingers as a viewfinder and you can bring it close or far kind of do it in the same proportion as your canvas and that gives you an idea of where you want to paint. I do want to include one of those front hills to the left and the um, and the castle but I want my land to be a little bit taller so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out where I want my water to go my horizon line where the water meets the land well it's not really a horizon but where the water meets the land I'm going to go maybe about three or four inches up on the left I want this to be straight so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my pencil as a measuring tool wherever I make that first mark I'm going to go to the opposing side I'm going to make another mark and now I'm just going to connect these dots I keep my eye on the prize which is the other dot or the other mark and that will give me a semi straight line and we can certainly modify it as we go along during the painting process and what I'm going to do for my next thing is I'm going to make my front hills so I'm going to capture that um, second to the right bumpy one at the top and I'm just going to kind of bring this down to the land or to where the water hits there's another one kind of coming up back here this is where my castle is going to be um, and then I've got the hill in the far back that just is kind of like a little roly-poly hill, goes above here, and then it kind of goes back up. So that's all I'm gonna do for my sketch. So what you're gonna to wanna to do for your next step is put your pencil down, get out your large bristle brush, take a sip, and get ready for your next step. Okay, so for the next step, what I'm gonna be doing is painting the sky. Um, I'm going to be using predominantly blue and white, but I'm probably going to use a touch of black because um, I might do those clouds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put blue and white on my brush to start. The um, sky to me gets lighter and lighter as it comes down towards the horizon or towards the top of those um, hills. So I'm starting kind of on the darker side up at the top 
Um, you could certainly use a different shade of blue if you wanted to, but I'm just using the ultramarine right now because I know it's gonna work well with the water when I get to the water. Um, I like to paint the edges of my canvas as I go along. You could certainly not do that or do it um, later, whatever you works for you. I might skip some, some spots for now. Um, but as I come down, what I'm doing is I'm not picking up any more blue. And what's happening is my sky will naturally get lighter and lighter as I come down that canvas. I have not washed my brush. I'm just picking up more white. And what will happen again is it will get lighter and lighter as it comes down the canvas. I'm using this kind of long crisscrossy, almost like a figure eight kind of motion with my brush as I go along. Um, this way it allows me to kind of lift off or follow through the um, particular brush stroke. And that way um, I don't end up having like the, I refer to them as cut marks. Um, where that brush stops and you can see like a line. Um, and depending on the type of canvas you use, you'll be able to see the brush strokes better or worse, you know, it all depends. Um, I'm gonna bring this all the way down to my pencil mark. So even if you go paint on top of your pencil a little bit, that's okay. Typically the pencil will show through um, acrylic paint. So you don't have to worry about that, just, you know, don't Put it on too too thick but you can certainly just go down and hit that pencil um, that way you don't have any vacant canvas in between the pencil and the um, sky and now i'm just going to put in a couple of little tiny clouds i'm using black and white because the ones that are out there to me kind of look on the grayer side so i just put a little bit of black and white on my brush and i'm just kind of scooting in a couple of these little clouds in through here i'm not really doing anything super fancy. I just kind of want to give some, some, you know, semblance of uh, information back there on the sky. Um, and this little gray clouds are definitely helping me to do that. And you can do them exactly as you see them out there or just kind of play with the placement of them, whatever visually works for you. Clouds are going to typically get skinnier as they go down towards that horizon line. Um, but that's all I'm going to do for this step. So when you're all set, you can wash and dry that large brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to be painting this back hill. Um, when you're painting a landscape, our eyes begin to not uh, be able to see certain colors the farther away they get. So when you look off in the distance, each hill will pro get progressively get almost bluer um, because our eyes are unable to see certain colors the farther away that they go. So this particular hill, I'm going to be using all of the colors on my palette except for red. So I'll be using white, blue, black, green, uh, burnt sienna, and yellow. And I'm just going to do a variety of um, shades. It looks like it's a little bit darker at the top in certain spots. Um, and it'll get a little bit lighter as it comes down towards the next hill. So I'm going to start with black, blue, and um, burnt sienna on my brush. And I'm going to be just applying it in this like dotting technique. Um, this allows you to definitely... Um, have a soft edge at the top, but still um, some, uh, uh, still the idea that there are trees and stuff back there. Um, and you wanna make sure that you cover that pencil mark so you don't end up uh, seeing that as a particular like outline, so to speak, as um, at the top. And I'm just kind of switching colors as I go because this type of um, hill back there right now it has shadows on it from the clouds and it also has shadows from the other little hills the the, the little spots that go up and down um, throughout the hills or with um, trees and stuff like that so you can get away with just kind of almost alternating the colors on your brush in order to get some areas to be light and dark 
Um, but the if you want there to appear to be certain valleys between um, particular areas, that's when you can concentrate more on the black. Um, and then if you want it to go lighter as it gets going down towards that next hill, you'll want to use more white. And then I'm just going to kind of continue to dot this. Don't forget to use your blue. Um, that is definitely going to tell the viewer without them realizing it that this is a far away um, hill. And I obviously am using that landscape as my inspiration, but I'm not going, you know, full photorealism, so to speak here. So you can use your own um, interpretation of what you're seeing and make this as light or bright or dark or, um, you know, any shade that you want, but definitely you'll want to use a little bit of that blue to help you with um, telling the viewer that it's far away. And you want to have those light spots and those dark spots in order to show dimension throughout, um, throughout the hills. And again, I'm just kind of getting these on here, um, trying to concentrate on getting a couple of light spots and dark spots to show that there is some little peaks and valleys throughout that back area or shadows from the clouds. Um, so you can certainly have fun with that and definitely some blue, not going to forget that blue. And then when you are all kind of set, just make sure that visually it appears to be a little bit lighter down by where it's hitting that next hill. And you'll see why in a minute, why that's pretty important. Um, it's going to help add, um, it's going to help to get that next hill to pop out. And then what I'm going to do is once I'm all set this, I'm going to wash and dry my brush, my big brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so for the next step, we're going to be using the bristle brush. We're going to be um, doing the next two hills that we have here. The colors that I'm going to be using are black, green, burnt sienna, yellow, and white. And by looking at the landscape, I see that it's really dark right where it hits the water. And this hill is going to be a little bit more vibrant. So it's going to have more yellows. It's going to have more contrast, which means I can see the black next to the green more, um, more visually clear. It's got more clarity to it. And then this one is a little bit more smoother because it's a little bit further back. So how I'm going to accomplish this is I'm going to start with black on my brush and I'm going to make the bottom of both of these hills have some black on them because this is going to give me that almost shadowed look at the bottom of the hills and it doesn't have to be really smooth where you are um, touching the water and you want to make this top edge on the softer side not a real firm line and the reason being is you want there to be um, you want the, it to look like there's going to be some um, light spots and dark spots almost going up into the bottoms of the, the tree line. Um, and if you have it just a straight line, you're going to have difficulty getting that shadow to appear. So I'm going to work on this one first because it's farther back and that'll give me an easier time to put this one on, on top of it. I did not wash my brush. I still have black on it, but I'm going to dip my brush into green, rust, and the yellow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do dots. So I'm just taking my brush and I'm dotting it. I'm starting from the bottom and I'm going to go up. Um, and what's going to happen is I will not pick up black again. That's going to be the only time I pick up black. And I'm just going to continue to pick up green, um, this burnt sienna, which you'll, you'll know, notice I call rust every now and again. Um, towards, I'm moving these towards the top. I'm using this dotting technique to almost get them to blend in together. And then I'm going to, I see that the ridge line is pretty uh, kind of dark as it hits this hill here, but I do want some lightness going through the middle. So I just picked up some white, green, and yellow, and I'm going to lighten up this hill right in the middle. And again, I'm just kind of dotting. So white, green, and yellow for this middle of this particular hill. And then when I go towards that top, that's when I'm going to start picking back up the black. 
and that's going to make it a little bit darker as it touches or is in front of the hill behind it and that's going to really make it pop out um, you don't have to go full on dark 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 but just to give it that contrast with the hill that it's sitting in front of that helps you out uh, a tremendous amount now sometimes when you're using this many colors on your brush what may happen is it might get what I refer to as muddy um, and if that is happening and you're not being able to control your light spots and dark spots what you can do is you can wash and dry that brush so if you feel like it's all turning gray and you're just you know blending too much and it's all working its way together then you can certainly wash and dry the brush but that's all I'm going to do for that hill and I'm going to immediately just come right over here I'm using the same colors I'm starting dark at the bottom I didn't wash my brush but if you had a lot of the white on your brush you certainly could and the trick here is just to get this to contrast right along this edge so you want to make sure that you kind of keep it nice and dark and if you want there to look like there's pine trees you can almost take this brush and make these little pointy marks coming up right in front of here and you can see how that is just making there look like there's some trees poking out in through here and then even you can do that with you know the black and the green as you get up towards here this is going to bring the clarity i was talking about earlier into this front hill um, it helps to show that there is definite um, you're able to see the details a little bit better so that's where this comes into play and now i'm just going to start picking up the rust green and yellow and i might add a little bit of white as i come down here too I want that bottom to be a little bit darker, but I definitely want some clarity in some of these areas. So I'm going to use a little bit more paint. And again, if you feel like you're not able to get the, um, if it's all mixing together for you and you're not able to get um, the colors that you're looking for, definitely, you know, if you need to wash and dry that brush, my eyes are a little teary with the um, sunshine. I've been in Ireland and Scotland the past couple of days and it, it's been really rainy so now my eyes are like oh my god what is this sunshine? <laughs> um, so definitely you know make this as vibrant. You can see my colors are definitely popping a lot more than that hill next to it and I just continue to kind of dot in through here. I am using that as a you know as a visual I see that there's a little bit of light stuff over here you know just as inspiration but as long as you can get these hills to kind of look a little bit different than each other and you can get this one to the left to have a little bit more information on it um, that's all you really need to do uh, I'm just continuing to pick up some green and yellow in through here get maybe this to have a little bit more vibrancy in this area I don't want this to just look like a black line up at the top get some of these to and if you feel that you want to you know make them look like there's more you know dimension just pop in a little bit of black here and there get some dark spots going um, I'm adding a little bit more black right now just so I can um, have some of these lighter areas pop out and to have it look like there's almost like a tree line down here so this is just adding a little bit of black to almost get some of these trees to pop right out and then that's all I'm going to do for this step once you feel you've got it nice and filled in I'm just kind of fiddling here to make sure I've got no vacant canvas I don't like vacant canvas um, I'm going to wash and dry this big brush, the bristle brush, in preparation for the next step. Okay, so what we're going to be doing next is we're going to paint the water. I'm going to use my bristle brush. I'm going to be using white, blue, and black. Um, and for me, typically your water is going to resemble somewhat your sky. This is lake water, so it's very, like ripply it's a little windy so I'm going to kind of have it a little bit more smooth in the background and then as it comes towards me I'm going to try and get it to show a little bit uh, more ripple it's going to be lighter 
back towards the land and get a little bit darker as it comes towards me. Um, and I might even put a little bit of a reflection on top of the water of the hills, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So I'm gonna start with white and blue on my brush. I'm gonna start at the top of my um, water and I'm just going left to right. So this is where you can um, smooth out that edge where it meets the uh, land. And of course, the more paint you put on your brush, the more you'll be able to get, um, bring it into a smooth kind of line if you want that smooth line, or you can just have it soft, whatever um, is visually appealing to you. Uh, I'm gonna kind of get mine to go a little on the smoother side. And you can always, you know, do touch-ups later, put more information at that land, whatever, again, works for you. But this is just a quick way to accomplish this. I wanna make sure that I bring it all the way up into that land or to the bottom of the land. So again, I don't have any vacant canvas. Um, and I'm just kind of scooting this back and forth, left to right, making sure I'm not tipped, which I might be a little bit, but that's all right. That's what happens when you sip and paint in Scotland. Um, let me just put a little bit more on over here. All right, and then I'm gonna to start to work my way down that water. Um, the blue is too blue for me, so that's why I'm going to use a little bit of black with it as well. Um, too blue meaning too vibrant for me. Um, I'm seeing a soft color out in the, in the actual water itself, and I kind of want to emulate what I have going up in the, in the sky on my, on my painting. Um, so that's why I'm incorporating a little bit of black, which in essence with the white is gray. So you're adding a little bit of gray to that water. And I want it to be a little bit darker as it comes towards me. So I'm gonna use a little bit more black. If you wanted to, you could certainly incorporate some gray, I mean uh, brown, you can incorporate some green because that also is very evident in lake um, landscapes. So you can, would they be lakescapes? Perhaps I've just come up with a new word. Um, they, lakes are definitely notorious for having that deeper, darker, more earthy kind of color in it. So you could certainly, and you can see I'm getting mine pretty dark down at the bottom. Um, and if you, I'll show you how to put a couple of little ripples in it if you wanted to. Um, I'm just going left to right, um, but the water is kind of coming in diagonally. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just using this left to right as my base. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start putting, I'll put in ripples. You can almost like put them in at a angle. So this is just a little bit of white on my brush and I'm almost just kind of like skirting it um, left to a, a, a diagonal. So it's like the water is coming being blown this way. And you don't have to do much of it, just give the viewer the information that, you know, this is the direction the water is coming. Even though um, the gradient comes down this way, you can direct the viewer to know what direction those waves or ripples are going in by just doing those subtle diagonal marks. And then that, I kind of been digging that. Hold on, I want, think I wanna, Add a little bit more over here. And then there seems to be kind of like a dark kind of line somewhere up and through here, which could be, uh, you know, more rippled water or reflection or something. So that's, that's what I'm gonna do for my reflection or ripple in the water. It's tough to stop. I know I just am doing these dark, sorry. I'll stop in a minute, I promise. All right. I think I want down here to be just a smudge darker. Bear with me. This is the this is the joy or problems of being a painter. It's really tough to stop, but I'm going to stop. I think right now. So the next step, I'm going to be using my small brush. So once you get your water all set, you can put the big brush away in your water cup. 
take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are gonna paint that tiny little castle way off in the distance. Um, I'm gonna be using my small brush. Um, I'm gonna be using a combination of white, black, and the burnt sienna. Um, the trick here, I really cannot see the details of that castle from here. So I'm gonna kind of improv here. Um, I'm gonna do a, like a beige base. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little bit of white, a little bit of the burnt sienna, a little bit of black, and just kind of mix myself a little like beige color um, or like a warm gray. And I'm gonna use that as a base for the castle itself. Um, if you needed to, if you're if using the burnt sienna made it a little bit too pink, you could just um, counteract that pink by using a little bit of yellow. That will help out. Um, so once you get the color that you want, what you're going to do is you're going to create a little rectangle off in the distance. So I'm coming somewhere in somewhere in here, and I'm just making myself a little rectangle. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a couple of little pieces on the top. This might be really hard for you to see. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna elevate this and make it lighter with white so you can see it more. I was gonna use white anyways for highlights, but I want you to be able to see this. So I have my, um, my rectangle in there. I'm gonna just kind of make it more vibrant for you to see. So I've got a rectangle, I've got a couple of little improv little things on my castle top in through there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use black around it to make it look like it's sitting, it's almost um, like in inside the, the woods over there. So I just put, I kind of wiped my brush off on my pants. <laughs> you could wash your brush if you wanted to. And then I picked up some black. Um, and I'm gonna almost kind of outline the sides and the top, uh, maybe a little bit below, but I think I'm gonna put some trees in front of the little castle so you can see it, um, or so it looks like it's sitting behind. And I don't want an exact outline. I'm, I just kind of want a shadowy area to make this pop out. And then, of course, you want some doors and windows. So I'm just gonna make some very, like, almost polka dots to, they can be um, systematic if you want to, but remember, this is just meant to be like the impression of a castle in the background. Um, and then if you wanted some, like, little trees or bushes in front, I'm just mixing a little bit of green and yellow and maybe a touch of white or something. And just to kind of give you some little trees in the front. But again, this is just meant to be the illusion or impression that there's a castle back there. And that's really all I'm gonna do. You could, you know, make tons more details or, you know, make it way brighter. Um, but for this quick, let's just have some fun kind of, um, I just added some white highlights here. Some little fun, this is a castle. That's all I'm gonna do. So for the next step, you're gonna wash and dry that small brush and just get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're doing for the next step is we're gonna be painting our little cute sailboats. I'm gonna be using my small brush. Um, you can literally use any color you want for this, but for me, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use white to start and then I will come back and add some colors. So I'm gonna use my small brush. Now these sailboats are clearly moving. So I'm gonna show you how to kind of make the shape, but the shape can be made at various angles. So once you get it down, you can just have fun and make as many as you want. If you want it to be more visible, you're gonna put the sailboat above at your kind of at your horizon line so i'm going to do one um in through here so you can really see it it's kind of just a triangle so i'm not pressing hard um, the bigger you make them the uh 
more obviously uh, closer they're going to look. You can make a real perfect triangle or you can make one that looks like it's being blown. So that's what I've done. I've made it so it looks like this triangle is not perfect. I kept the bottom pretty straight, but then um, the part where the canvas is, I've made it look like it is moving or being blown. And then you can have fun with the base of it. You can make this, you know, long or short. I'm just going to use white. I'll probably do a little pull in the middle. And then I'm just going to make a whole bunch of them. Um, once you have made as many as you want, you can put some in the water like I'm doing here. Um, they don't, your triangles do not have to be the same because the boat could be turned and therefore you're only seeing part of it. But you do want to somehow get um, the, the information that it's, you know, it's tall, it's got, um, you know, it, it's got the ability to be blown because, um, you know, that's how they move. Uh, you, you need the little bottom part, the boat. Of course, you can't really see my boats right now because the bottom part, because they're, um, they're white. Uh, but I'm going to make a bigger one in through here so you can kind of see that it's closer. This one's really close to us. And again, you can make it as, as many as you want. You could have fun and put 50 in through here. Um, but once I have the boat shape and the sail, I've got my my boat in through here and I'm not doing more than like just a, a longer triangle or a longer rectangle for the boat part. Now I've got to get them to pop out so you can see them. I'm just wiping my brush off on my paper towel. I'm going to use white and a touch or excuse me black and a touch of blue to almost underline that boat uh, to make it look like it is um, pushing the water or like there's a shadow underneath it so I'm just really taking a little bit of black if you feel like you've gone too dark you can just pick up a little bit more white and blue that's the idea here this is just uh, meant to look like the water colors the colors that you have in your water are surrounding the bottom of that boat and the boat either has a shadow under it or it's pushing the water um, so adding this contrast in color underneath the boat is helping to make that boat pop out so you can see it. Um, so once I've got that, now I just get to color my boats and my sails. So if I want like a, a red boat, I might want two red boats. I'm just adding a little bit of red to there. Maybe I've got some red stripes on that one. Maybe I have a yellow one over here. So these are just meant to be fun. Um, don't feel like you have to make them exactly. You can see where I was painting the sailboats right now, they're, they're all gone. <laughs> so have fun with this. Maybe you have a, like a little green bow. Um, you could have polka dots, you could have solid colors, you could have stripes, whatever is visually appealing to you, just go with it. That's what's gonna make these type of paintings um, more conducive to, to your personality. Just put your personality right in that painting and have fun with it. It doesn't, um, it doesn't have to be, you know, representational of a photograph. It can just be fun and light. And what I'm doing right now, I want these sails to kind of pop out too and they're not, so I'm just adding a little bit of darkness at the bottom, so that helped it to pop out. So, that's it on my sailboats. Um, we have one final step, and it's done with the small brush, but I'm gonna wash it and dry it. I said I'm done, but I'm, I'm still painting. Um, so you're gonna wash and dry that small brush and get ready for the final step. Okay, so here we go. This is the last step. Last step of any good painting is to sign it. So I'm using my small brush. I'm going to use black paint. Um, a trick to uh, that a lot of people in my little world ask me about is how do you do this without making it really thick? 
Um, so I'm just adding a little bit of water to my paint. I take my brush, I spin it in the paint, and then it becomes like an ink consistency, and it helps me to get my signature nice and um, free flowing. I have a bee that just landed on my finger. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I'm a little freaked out. It just ran away, ran away, flew away. Um, but that's all that there is to this painting. I hope you enjoyed the experience. I hope you love your painting, and I look forward to painting and sipping and crying with you again sometime. <laughs>